Okay, so let's look at a few examples on how do we multiply fractions together. Okay, here first of all we see it's not a fraction times a fraction, but just to help us to uh, to do it because we want to multiply numerator with numerator, denominator with denominator, we'll first put 3y over 1 so that we can multiply it times 2y over 21 and then before we actually do the multiplication we see can't we cancel any common factors there's a 3 in this numerator and there's a 21 here and 3 goes into itself once and into 21 seven times so I divided the numerator and denominator with 7 and uh, there's nothing that can cancel this way so we've got a 1 times 2 which is 2 a y times y which is y squared and then in the denominator we only have a 1 times 7 so 2y squared over 7 is our final answer for that first one how about the next one okay so in the next one we have something squared now there's two ways of doing it I can either write it as negative 2d over 9 times negative 2d over 9 and this also gives us an opportunity to, to speak about that negative is the negative in the numerators or the denominators? Actually, this negative belongs to the whole fraction. But if I want to, I can give it to the numerator or to the denominator. doesn't matter. Or I can treat it as a negative 1 that is multiplying this, uh, the whole fraction. Okay, I'm going to simply say this is actually negative 2 negative 2 it doesn't matter you can give the negative either to the numerator or to the de denominator the reason why is because in the end the 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 sign in front is simply the result of of the signs of the numerator and the denominator so negative divided by a positive gives me a negative so um, that that's why the negative comes to the front but to do the actual calculation it's probably better to just hand it hand the negative to one of the numerator or denominator I don't like saying things like that hand it to this one so understand this but in general practice you can uh, you can simply give that negative to the numerator or denominator okay so negative 2 times negative 2 is negative is positive 4 sorry positive 4 d times d is d squared and then 9 times 9 is 81 okay so another way we could have done this was simply to give the square to the numerator okay in this case there's there's more than just that there's also a negative one factor so it would have been negative one squared then the numerator is a factor so 2d is the numerator gets squared over and the 9 gets squared also and then when we do all of this a uh, negative one squared is positive 2d squared becomes 4d squared and 9 squared is 81 okay next one next in the next one we have a, uh, a really confusing looking bunch of uh, factors but first just notice there's no pluses or minuses which means I can just cancel factors okay so for example there's a 2 there that divides into itself once and in, in the denominator it can divide into this 8 four times there's a 3 it can't divide into 7 or the 4 so the 3 doesn't cancel okay um, so nothing else can cancel with regards to the coefficients how about the z's there's 13 z's and no none and no other ones in the numerator in the denominator there's six here so six of these will cancel with six of those so now instead of 13 left there will only be seven left and then there's another four here and those four will cancel with four of these seven so we'll have seven uh, three z factors left in the numerator for the W, I've got these four will cancel with almost all. They will just leave one W. But then there's another four here. So this W, the last one here, will cancel with three of uh, with with one of these to leave only three. So what do I have left? I hope I didn't cross out you too much and confuse you. But the coefficient is one times three. So the coefficient in the numerator is three. 
Of the Z's, there's three, three Z's left. Of the W, there's three W's left. In the denominator, everything cancels. All that's left over is the coefficient 7 and 4. So 7 times 4 is 28. And there I've completely multiplied numerator and the denominator. And my final answer, if I did all of the cancellations in these ones, and you didn't have to, uh, you could have first gotten the answer and then, then do the uh, cancellations. But if I did everything correct, then this should be my final answer that's completely simplified. Okay, next one. Okay, here we can see we can't now just go ahead and cancel x's with x's here. That's not how it works because this x is not a factor. It is a term inside this whole factor. Okay, so I can only consider this whole thing as, as a factor on its own and that whole thing. And, and when I look at it like this, there's no factor in the numerator that can cancel with a factor in the denominator. And one reason is because I can still factorize this. So let's do that first. Let's say x plus 3 over x plus 1. And then we multiply that with x plus 5. And in the denominator, we see this one can factorize. Hopefully, it factorizes into two brackets that can cancel nicely. And usually, it will. Okay, so x, x. We have what times what gives me 15, and when I add, um, add them together, I get 8. Well, that's easy. 5 times 3 gives me 15, and 5 plus 3 gives me 8. And I, I could have known it's going to be those two brackets, because one of them is going to cancel with this one, the other one is going to cancel with that one. And again, they don't really cancel, they divide. I've divided the numerator with x plus 3 to cancel this one and the denominator to cancel that one. So I did something in the numerator and the denominator. So there's actually a one left here and a one left there. So in the bottom as well, there's a one left here and a one left there. So in the end, I've got one times one is one, and x plus one times in the end, there's only a one left here. Please, there's never a zero left when we cancel common factors. Please remember that. So one over x plus one is what I'm left with in the end. Okay. See if we can do all of this in less than 10 minutes. I doubt it. Okay. This one, again, not unless I can cancel a whole, this whole thing with something, the whole thing in the denominator, I'm going to have to first factorize. So the first one factorizes into two brackets. What times what multiplies to give me 20 and adds up to negative 9. That's 5 and 4. Okay. You could have said 10 plus 1, but the, but, um, then you have to subtract, okay? And this plus tells me my signs have to be the same. So the signs have to be the same. Both of them are going to end up being negative. X minus five and X minus four. Minus five times minus four gives me positive 20. And minus five minus nine gives me, uh, minus four gives me minus nine. That's for the numerator. How about the denominator? Denominator, what times what gives me 12 and added together gives me 7. That's x minus 3, x minus 4. Okay, and this, I don't want to go through all of that again, so I'm going to do this for time's sake. All I'm doing is simply factorizing everything. In this case, the minus 12 and I get positive 1 means I'll have plus 4 and minus 3. Plus 4 and minus 3 gives me positive 1, and when I multiply them, it gives me negative 12. For the final one, okay, what times what gives me 7, and when I add them, to, uh, gives me 10, and when I add them together, I get negative 7. That's x minus 5 and x minus 2. Okay, so now we can just go ahead and cancel uh, until we're blue in the face, okay, and let's see, we can cancel x minus 5, x minus 5, x minus 4, x minus 4. Anything that's in the numerator with anything in the denominator. x minus 3 and x minus 3. And in the end, we see we've got these two left. And we have x plus 4. I don't need brackets anymore because it's not multiplying anything. And x minus 2. And at this point, please, please, many then go ahead and do this. And uh, 2 goes in there once and in there, and so the answer is 2. It's not. OK, 
okay you cannot cancel over a plus and a minus okay there's more than one term this is the final answer it can't go any simpler than this I think um, uh, well no it can't okay so leave it as that please don't cancel over pluses and minuses and yet it's something quite common okay let's see if we can fit this last one in in the next couple of minutes the problem is this time we have coefficients to the x squared so this is definitely that uh, cross method and uh, we need a cross method for uh, all three of these okay which is a lot fortunately in front is a is a five for all of them and five is a prime number which means it can only be five x and x for all of them it must be five x and x okay and we just need to find out what's the other one for this one this one we can do we've got x and x and then uh, this negative 3 in the end what times what gives me negative 3 and when I add them together I get 2 that's uh, negative 2 it's negative 3 and positive 1 okay here I've got 5x and here I've got x okay let's quickly do a cross method for each of those three let's start with this the, the top one so what I'm doing is I'm doing this cross method and this side I know one is five and the other one is one now I just want to know how do I get eight well I either get one by saying one times two or two times four or four times two or sorry not one times two one times eight or eight times one and what I'm trying to get is positive six and I get that by cross multiplying but since there's a negative I have to subtract so the two signs must be different a plus and a minus okay I should get positive six which means the biggest one of the two must come at the top I must get positive six okay so five times eight is 40 and one to, that's too big 40 minus one will not work five times four is 20 minus two also not so this did this didn't work that didn't work now 5 times 2 is 10 minus 4 that one's gonna work 10 minus 4 so it's this one okay 5 times 2 so it's 5 uh, and it should be positive 10 so it's 5 times positive 2 and 1 times negative 4 to get the negative 4 so it's 5 X minus 4 and 1 X plus 2 good okay let's try now the same thing this time we want to get four okay four is a little bit different let's just clear this up okay so this time i'm trying to get four which means i've got one times four or uh, sorry my middle term that I'm trying to get is 8 positive 8 middle term is positive 8 again meaning the the biggest one must be at the top so it's 1 times 4 2 times 2 or 4 times 1 so let's try 5 times 4 is uh, 20 minus 1 times 1 is so 20 minus 1 is 19 so this one doesn't work 5 times 2 is 10 minus 2 that one's going to work 5 times 2 gives me 10 and it's positive 10 so it's 5 times positive 2 and 1 times negative 2 must give me the negative okay uh, should it be different signs let's see yes okay that's a negative so they have to have different signs which means it's uh, 5x minus 2 and then 1x plus 2 x plus 2 how about this last one okay this last one is negative 4 so it's the same thing the only thing we want now is a positive 1 okay so uh, the first one didn't give that let's so that one didn't give that so it must be this last one let's see okay we'll do that in red 5 times 1 is 5 okay and we want positive 1 so we're trying to get positive 1 5 times 1 is 5 4 times 1 is 4 so that's 5 and 4 
4, negative 4, and that gives me positive 1. So it's 5 times positive 1, and 1 times negative 4 gives me 5x minus 4, as well as 1x plus 1. 1x plus 1. There we go. That's a lot of work to get the simplification. I think that's almost 5 minutes of work, but and now we can go ahead and write our answer by first cancelling everything that can. 5x minus 4, 5x minus 4. Uh, then we have x plus 2, x plus 2. Then we have uh, x plus 1 and x plus 1. And right in the end, now all that's left over. So here's left a 1 and a 1, a 1 and a 1 and a 1. They all cancelled and left 1 as a factor. So we left with x minus 3 over 5x minus 2 and that's it okay a lot of work for a very pretty answer and that's me for now i hope uh, this helped and i'll see you in the next video i think finally i promised this before but finally i'm going to get to adding fractions i'll see you in those videos